Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Spellbinder's weekly newsletter from the Unfiltered News, where political correctness is not spoken here, from G. Edward Griffin's Reality Zone. Ah, uh, seems like things run like this. I had a uh, hard drive crash, oh, probably a week or two before Mr. Griffin had his. That's why his uh, Friday the 13th newsletter was late. And this week's newsletter didn't come out till Saturday. But this is the unfiltered news. Headlines you may have missed for September 14th through the 20th, 2013. And this week's comic is, it has turned into a civil war. And as tricky as that sounds, I truly believe a military strike is justified and necessary. And she turns to the associate, uh, Syria? No, Obamacare. <laughs> Order a strike, air strike on Obamacare, people that don't want it. Yeah. Okay, this week's headlines that you may have missed. Stories that are of interest to you, or should be. Starting with this one. U.S. House conservative voted to cut nearly $4 billion a year from the food stamp program that has more than doubled since 2008 to $78 billion. That's a mere 5% reduction and would do little to balance a budget, but it would make a lot of people hungry. Even so, it has little chance of passing in the Senate, and if it does, Obama has promised to veto it. Anything to put more pressure on the people. CBS. September 20th. Just wrong. I mean, these people reason their own food stamps is because they don't have a job and they lost their houses. I mean, it's it's their eat or die, you know, type thing. And if they're using food as a weapon, well, we're already too late in saving this country. Oh, man. Here's the next article of interest to be used in the future as reference. U.S. Aaron Alexis, the D.C. Navy Yard shooter, was on a prescription drug called Trazodone, an antidepressant that can cause suicidal tendencies, panic, and anger. This drug has been linked to a number of murders and at least one other mass shooting. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All these shooters are on these SSRIs. This is an article from InfoWars, September 19th. Optional reference from the BBC is here. And I'll have a link at the bottom of the video so you can click on these headlines and learn news you may not have been told on the mainstream media. Ah, Fox and MSNBC and CNN and the rest of them. Uh, next, Federal Reserve Chairman Bernanke announced that the Fed will continue buying government bonds at a rate of $85 billion a month. $85 billion a month. Wow. That was a reversal of his previous announcement in which he said purchases would be tapered off. Purchasing government bonds is a mechanism by which new money is created out of nothing and pumped into the economy. It is the primary cause of inflation. The Fed has created $3.66 trillion over the last five years. This has enriched the banks, but failed to improve the economy. It has prolonged and increased the agony of the impending collapse. Coming in October 15th is the rumor being spread around the web. Ah, uh, Corral News, September 19th. Yeah, there are $3.66 trillion in just over the last five years. And I wonder why we're over 18 trillion in personal country debt and over 100 trillion worldwide. <laughs> that can never be paid back. Time to hit the reset button here, folks. Next article of interest that you should keep for future reference. World's top climate scientists told to cover up the fact that Earth's temperature hasn't risen for the last 15 years. It hasn't. Daily Mail, September 19th. It's just amazing that they said by this time, 2013, there would be no ice caps. 
and the waters would be up 20 feet or 200 or something even though uh, during this same time up to 4 2013 Al Gore was buying a lot of uh, seafront properties uh, yeah beachfront property is what he has been buying in Florida and California and, and he's telling you that the, he's trying to get you to sell so he can buy all this prime property along the coast that's what's really going on here Alrighty then, next video. New study showed that the current financial crisis with its resulting loss of jobs and lower living standards is responsible for higher suicide rates amongst men in the U.S. and Europe. BBC, September 18th. That's right, when you have nothing to lose, you just lose it. And you either take it on them, or take it out on the outward, or you take it on inward, on yourself. That's just the way it is when they take all hope away from you. Next article. Brazil plans to break away from the U.S. controlled internet and connect with the European computer networks with underwater cables and other systems. This is in response to the U.S. NSA spy program that has been snooping on the private emails and phone calls of Brazilian leaders. The Hindu reports September 18th. Yeah, they're, they're going on their own route. They're going to bypass the U.S. spy system altogether and just go over seas directly well that's telling you something there telling you that nobody agrees with what this government's doing at this time <clears throat> next video a prominent Syrian blogger has posted videos of Syrian mercenaries I mean rebels launching chemical weapons on August 21st the date of most recent chemical attack the videos are said to be taken from the cell phone of a rebel fighter. Russia Today, September 18th. That's <laughs> right. They have several videos on YouTube showing these guys with their homemade toys, with homemade sarin gas. And uh, it's the bragging. They're in bragging rights right now. But yet our government and, and the mainstream media control their uh, body, military, industrial complex. <laughs> Won't say a word about that. Uh, next, over two-thirds of Costa Rica's ca cantons have banned GMOs. This is a result of citizens' concern over the possible long-term damage to local agriculture caused by Monsanto, I mean Monsanto's to use Costa Rica as a testing ground for the development of GMO crops. GM education, September 17. Oh, by and by, they're already using uh, GMO testing in Hawaii. Uh, reported by Mike Rivero, radio talk show host. Okay, at whatreallyhappened.com. He's already saying, yeah, they're already doing those tests here on the big islands and stuff of GMO because it's isolated. Problem is, it's cross pollinated all the food sources on that island. Oh, well, and everything has a little GMO to it. Next, this article gives sources for evidence that the U.S. facility in Benghazi was a secret distribution center to provide weapons to jihadist-led mercenaries, rebels, in Syria. Coral Net Daily, September 17th. That's right. That's where it was. That was about, that was, this is part of the Benghazi gate cover-up. As well as a possibility that I agree with Mike Rivero that they probably staged the Benghazi in, uh, invasion. And it started out to be just an enactment, but as it turns out, the neighbors around there thought the the embassy was being really attacked, so they picked up their real firearms and real torches and stuff and ran over there to give a hand. And they got out of control, you know, ambassador gets killed, Obama's in cover-up mode, and he was trying to do it like... Uh, Reagan did with the hostage situation to get him released just before the elections. He would work out a release thing of the kidnapped hostages, uh, the ambassador and stuff, and, and that didn't happen. No, things turned out quite wrong for them. When they try to do evil, evil comes back to bite them, it seems. Obama's in big trouble with that one. That's why they're trying to get in the war with Syria so everyone forget this stuff going on. Okay, next article. The new Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, 
reportedly is prepared to close down the Ford Hour uranium enrichment enrichment plant in exchange for termination of international sanctions. Anti-war, September 16th. Yeah, they're trying to bend a little bit here to show they're they're not that aggressive as everyone in the U.S. government's saying they are. They've got weapons. They're going to blow up everything. They're kill. The only people in the Middle East I know of that have nuclear weapons and aren't under the proliferations contract signed by <clears throat> everyone else with nuclear weapons is Israel. They're the only ones that have 400 to 800 nuclear warhead, tipped warheads, and uh, have them on German-made submarines given to them by the Germany as part of the bargain of paying off for the Holocaust type deal. That's what that's all about. And uh, <coughs> they're the only nuclear power in the Middle East that can actually, and are, are not controlled by any rules, making them more dangerous than any of the other dictator states. Anywho, next video. The U.S. hit its debt ceiling on May 19th, 2013, but the Treasury spent an extra $260 billion anyway. To do this, the Treasury borrowed the money from the Government Securities Investment Fund, you know, a retirement fund for 4.6 million federal employees that work for the government, and promised to repay it when Congress eventually raises the debt ceiling. This sets a dangerous precedent for dipping into retirement savings to pay for current expenses. Anyway, a so-called debt ceiling is a bad joke when Congress can increase, and always does, whenever it wants. It's just a bad idea from them. It's nothing good comes out of that. Russia Today, September 16th. They're just robbing Paul to pay Peter all the time now. They're, they're no longer able to sustain themselves without spending. Alrighty, next. Polish activists are circulating a petition to the government to get the country's gold back from the Bank of England, where it was sent during World War II, to protect it from the Nazis. The bank has refused to return it. Imagine that. They probably don't have it. Wealth cycle, September 16th. Yep, see, everyone's starting to demand their gold back. I mean, everyone started to do that. And no one has the gold to give back in their vaults because they used it to pump up the uh, the the paper gold that's out there to pump it and back it up in case people do turn and run and want their real assets and not paper. Uh, this is going to be it's going to be really bad. What's coming up in the next couple of months? Because. Things like this is going to start happening. Like it's got me out buying silver again, even at twenty-seven cents or twenty-seven dollars an ounce, and that's with the uh, oh, with everything on it, plus tax. You know, it's coming out about thirty dollars an ounce right now. <coughs> so uh, I went and got three ounces more to go in my collection. I'm going to start doing that again. I can see this is coming to fruitation, this crash of the dollar. It could happen at, oh, about any time. Just one wrong move by somebody in the government, and it all comes tumbling down, the house of cards. Okay. Wealth cycle, September 16th. Just read that. Next, Washington, D.C. The BBC reports that a well-trained and equipped SWAT team at the scene of the Naval Yard shooting was given a stand-down order to not respond to the shooting. It's true, for 24 minutes they were given a stand-down order. Ah, let's let the guy go in and do what he's going to do and then go in and clean up and show off your uniforms and put your arms up and say, look, we're doing our job. No, you're not. You're staging your job. Anyway, InfoWars, September 18th. That's just about the same thing they did at all the other places. They had people stand down, like World like at the uh, World Trade Center, 9/11. Uh, the Pentagon had a jet coming in. Cheney's down in, the, in the <laughs> Cheney's in control down in the underground bunker. <clears throat> Airman keeps coming in there saying, "Sir, the jet's 30 miles out. Do the orders still stand?" And it was stand down orders, and he says yes. And he keeps coming back to her. He's like 10 miles out, sir. Do the order still saying? And he whips his head around and said, has, any, has anyone said any different? <laughs> Basically, yes. And they let that jet hit the Pentagon. And that's what happened there. Jet, cruise missile, whatever you want to say it. 
I'm still looking at the pictures that show a 20 foot diameter hole and no wing crash into the side to make cut and twist into the first bricks. Didn't see nothing like that, so I'm still on the on the fence. If it was a jet or was it a cruise missile? Well, hell, was it a drone? <laughs> a large drone. At that time, probably the drones were bigger. Now they got them down to toy size. Infowars, September 18th. Next, a report from the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency says that Israel has 80 nuclear warheads and enough fusible material to produce 190 more. That's this. Uh, that's that's a. That's this. Basically, like saying, you know, in a way, saying, uh, yeah, they only got 80. Well, I added Seawell to that, and that's probably more closer to what they got. Uh, let's see. Israel f refuses to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. See, they still refuse to do it, and yet they got nuclear weapons and are a wild card out in the Middle East. And they have no laws controlling them and their nuclear weapons. No treaty of non-proliferation. A matter of deep concern to Arab countries, considering they don't have nukes, and they did sign up on the non-proliferation treaty. This is from Tehran Times, September 15th. Yeah, that's well known. I mean, even um, even candidate for president Ron Paul came out and said they had four to eight hundred nuclear warheads that he found out. So it's not a secret, really, that that they have this stuff. Okay, here's another video. Uh, Russia and the U.S. have reached agreement on a plan for Assad to hand over serious chemical weapons for destruction. The plan contains provisions that likely will not be acceptable to Syria. If Syria does not comply, the U.N. Security Council will determine if military force will be used. This, too, is an unlikely outcome because Russia has veto power and does not support the U.S. objectives in Syria. Conclusion, a U.S. military strike is unlikely at this time. U.N. military action also is unlikely, and the civil war will continue. When listening to Secretary of State Kerry explain the plan, notice the unspoken assumption that the Assad regime has used chemical weapons against civilians. Otherwise, why all the fuss about confiscating them? However, evidence favors the conclusion that the chemical attacks were made by the mercenary forces. I mean, rebels, they keep calling them not the Assad regime. Kerry has no plan to force the <laughs> Mursa rebels to turn over their chemical weapons. CNN, September 15th. I mean, this is just getting deeper and deeper in the, the possible problems we're going to have. Okay, I'm going to get this, this perfect here. Uh, video. U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau that was created in 2011 supposedly to protect citizens from the bank fraud is tracking 80% of all credit card transactions and wants to track 100% of them to fight crime and terrorism, of course. Fox News, September 16th. No, they want to find out what you're doing, what you're buying. So they can either put a bottleneck on it or, or take it off the market altogether if it's something that may save your life in the future. Yeah, just... just Keep an eye on them watching your credit card and your purchases. Never know what evil lurks behind that. Next, U.S., the CEO of a telecom company, has revealed that the NSA started its unconstitutional wiretapping program six months prior to 9-11. That means that spying on U.S. citizens was not motivated by the so-called war on terror. Story leaked September 15th. See? There it is right there. Six months before, prior to 9-11, they were spying on everyone. And they were just starting to build NSA offices all through AT&T offices. And tapping in on people's calls and everything. Yeah, this, is, this has been going on. This is the old Welly in U.S. way of doing things. In Britain, they just put cameras everywhere, just like in all wells, 1984. And they probably start selling just the TVs with the camera built in so they can watch you, too, while you watch TV. Yeah, that type of thing. It's all 1984-ish going on here. Next article. Obamacare may question your sex life. Right? Prepare to answer invasive and unnecessary questions about your sex life next time you go to your doctor. I'll go to a doctor. Under Obamacare, doctors risk financial penalties if they omit the data. 
Such information can be used to blackmail citizens into compliance with unpopular government policies. Yeah, they're going to use it for blackmail. Of course, New York Post, September 15th. Of course, they have to have power over the people so they can do the things that they're not allowed to do constitutionally. Because it takes longer. Yes, Kissinger. The, 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 what was it? The wrong, uh, the evil things we do immediately, the constitutional things against the Constitution, it takes a little longer. Eric Kissinger, I didn't quite quote that word for word, but it's basically what he said. Okay, now, back to the Syria incident, or Syria story. U.S. military consultant, IHS James, says uh, nearly half of the rebel forces, mercenary forces, fighting the Syrian government are jihadist terrorists or extreme Islamic hardliners. These groups are being funded and armed by the U.S. <coughs> and other Western governments. Telegraph, September 15th. There you go. They're mercenaries. You can't call them rebels since they're not from there. They're <laughs> not from Syria. They're not rebels. They're mercenaries. I'm telling you. They, they're trying to use double speak on you from Orwell's 1984. All right, here we go. Two former employees of J.P. Morgan blew the whistle on the company's manipulation of gold and silver in the summer of 2012. The Commodities and Futures Trading Commission covered up the evidence and has failed to act, even now, over a year later. King World News posted September 14th. See that? That's why we have to do what Kaiser says. Max Kaiser. He says everybody should buy at least one ounce of silver and make it scarce on the market. And so people will want to start trading their paper in. And when they go to J.P. Morgan to collect it, they're going to find out that there's more paper than there is assets sitting in J.P. Morgan's vaults. And they're going to find out that there is no gold or silver for those pieces of paper. They're worth as much as our dollar is. Nothing. It's paper being printed out of nothing and believed in being worth something. Even though you go to the store and everything it was $3 is now $6 and so on. I mean, I've just been amazed going in there and seeing the prices. Bacon that used to be two ninety nine for a pound is six thirty nine to eight dollars a pound for bacon. Yeah. That's how inflated the money has become. Just within a year. I mean I noticed that price went up within a year. Oh, not good. Not good at all. Alrighty then. Next, the 10th Amendment Center is inviting Americans to take action to nullify the spying activities of the NSA. This is done through the Fourth Amendment Protection Act that prohibits material support to the feds for unwarranted spying, prohibits states from providing services, even water, to federal spy organizations, and makes any person or business ineligible to trade within the state if they engage in unconstitutional spying. TAC attack posted September 14th. Very interesting to know this. Everyone should get involved. We can shut down one of the alphabets. Maybe we'll have a domino effect on the rest of them. Alrighty. Last two stories for this week is under analysis. And it is a video by Judge Napolitano who explains that since Washington, D.C. has tough gun control laws, the Navy Yard where the recent shooting occurred was a gun-free zone. He says that if the guns had been allowed, the shooter would have been quickly stopped or would never have attempted the attack in the first place. Fox Insider, September 17th, and this rings so true. If, if they all had guns... The shooter may have got one person before he got several <laughs> from others. Ah, several hits. Oh, man, see, this is, and it and it shows they're they're working backwards, backwards thinking. They're trying to say, yeah, you take away guns, the crime level goes down. No, then it goes up. Only if you do the opposite. If everyone's carrying a gun, does the crime level go down to zero? Reminds me of the story down in Florida where women were being raped. Uh, five or six a week in this one town in Florida. Well, the mayor of the town said, hey, everyone's allowed to carry, all women are allowed to carry concealed weapons. Guess what? The rape stopped overnight and they haven't had it since. It's one of those things. It's like, uh, see, criminals don't want to get shot either. 
Uh, last but not least, the Benghazi blackout. How the big three networks censored or spun Obama's disastrous handling of the Benghazi affair. Here is a timeline of the major elements that the mainstream media ignored. Newsbusters. September 9th. And that's the way it is. They're, they've been covering for him. They've been making a, a wagon, a row of wagons around circle of Obama protecting him. Because the industrial military complex pays for them. So, of course, they're going to protect the man who's helping out the industrial military complex, which is the POTUS himself. All right. Next, great photos in the cool down for this week. Here's a great one. Need help, little buddy? I like that. That's kind of cool. Elephant sitting there reaching out his trunk and there's a little kitten down on his rock and around, surrounded by water. Yeah. And then you got your humor for the for this week. And then you got this guy here, new NSA iPhone, get one today, humorous commercial. Why Congress does not impeach Obama, and you'll find out why. Will Arctic ice continue to grow? Oh, that's right, the Arctic ice has actually grown twice as much this year, over this year, than it has in previous years. And they're still trying to claim that we're in an ice age. We're in an ice age. We're all gonna, we're all actually, we're all gonna burn up and blow away. It's dust, and we actually are going into a mini ice age, probably like the one they had in the 18th century, where the times froze over for several months, and they built shops and stuff on the times, and people were skating back and forth to get to each shop. I mean, it was that that cold for about 10 years before that mini ice age went away. Oh well, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Uh, I guess I'm going to go and try to enjoy the rest of get something done this weekend for myself. Until next time, hey, this is Spellbinder saying be good or be good at it and have a wonderful weekend. And keep your eye on the government because they're always up to something. Something not good for the people. Good day.